let's keep it uh, going with what one should be expecting in today's day as well. And let's bring on board Sanjeev Basin, Director of IFL Securities, joining in with us. Uh, very good morning, Sanjeev uh, uh, Basin, sir. And, uh, you know, in terms of overall, let's start today by talking about Reliance as well as uh, Walt Disney and obviously the definitive agreement they've signed. What are your thoughts coming in for Reliance? Yesterday it was overall in terms of a trade was quite weakish. Reliance also saw a very sharp fall. What's your view on this now? Yeah, good morning. So, Vinny, I think it's a win-win deal, at least for Reliance, which is stepping up their stone. Uh, as far as media, now becomes a very, very key component. And, you know, sports channel and the whereabouts. And and it's a, it is gaining more advantage after the fallout of the Z-Sony deal. I think this is a win-win situation. Uh, they've committed big, big capital. And Walt Disney, as you globally know, is a $200 billion company. So, I think uh, media in India is still relatively one of the biggest under owned and under you know estimated as far as earnings go and there is a long way forward so reliance always invests with a long term view and i think this would be a positive on the structural side uh, it it is a foray into media which we know is something which is in in the world context is gaining even more traction in the indian context so i think it's a thumbs up on the reliance stock performance obviously yesterday you saw a sell off because of, uh, you know, inherent reasons of mid-caps being overbought, uh, semi-stipulation, those are all causes and reasons. There was froth on the mid-caps and that what saw, uh, uh, you know, some sort of uh, 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 expiry-related pressure on derivatives and so on. But that's part and parcel after you've seen such a big run. I think it's part and parcel. For me now, Reliance and HDFC banks should be the main pillars of the index and the rest of the mid-caps can continue to be consolidating for some time. Okay, fair enough. And what's the outlook then when it comes to, Sanjeev, uh, the entire auto space? I on the February auto sales and we're expecting that maybe for the CV sector, the pre-election order slowdown will hurt volumes? Good morning. So, Awan, a large part of that is already in the price. We think in the CV space, uh, space we still like Ashok Leland as our top pick. Maruti in the four-wheeler space, and we continue to be overweight on Bajaj Auto. Now, as far as <clears throat> performance goes, you will have to see that the stock prices have already depicted the best of the auto sales. Look at some of the OEMs which are starting to perform. Uh, one, one stock which I've been recommending all the way from 65, 70, 90 is Madarsan Sumi. I think that is in a very sweet spot because globally now their uh, overall reach in different places has played out very, very well. So, you know, you have to be selective in the stocks which you buy. Uh, as a disclosure, Ashok Leland is our still remains our top pick. It is getting more market share in the CV market from uh, uh, Tata Motor. The bus market is doing excellent. And overall, their new entrants, uh, particularly the Dost model, which is an ICV, that is doing very, very well. So, Ashok Leland, Maruti and Bajaj Auto along with Madrasan Subi would be four good picks for you to make money in the near to stop long term. On the other hand, we think some most of the other stocks, particularly Mahindra, Mahindra and the others, we've taken some chips off the block as it hits new highs. That has been a huge outperformer in our portfolio. Right. Uh, you know, Kunal, let me uh, come across to you also here. And right now, just bring in your views in terms of uh, autos. What is looking exciting to you? You know, we did have commentary coming in that in the pa passenger vehicle side, you know, the EV segment, that's not doing well. Uh, other than that, you know, right now in terms of an expectations, PVs, the passenger vehicles is expected to be stable. But, uh, you know, what is overall in terms of the view that one could watch out for from the auto sector and in terms of what is looking attractive in terms of charts? See, I'm very bullish on the space uh, for the entire auto pack and, uh, you know, it's possible that many of the stocks which have run up, they could see a phase of a correction. But, you know, we have to understand that a correction is completely different than a trend reversal for many of the stocks within the auto pack. Now, you know, look at Tata Motors, what the stock has done over the last four years from 2020 lows when it was double digit and it's now on the verge of breaking past about a possible four digit mark. So it's been a phenomenal journey for the stock in the last four years. And of course, in, in the last three, four years, there have been multiple phases of correction for the stock price where there's been a lot of negative news flow, etc. surrounding the stock price. But I believe that one has to try and distinguish, uh, you know, how correction shapes as well as a trend reversal. 
look at M&M, the stock from 700 levels from 2022 mid has come back towards a point where it's now about to break the 2000 levels also. Maruti has made a very strong comeback this year. It's been a huge lagard, a, a major underperformer from the auto pack. Uh, larger cap names, that stock is looking attractive at the 11,000 plus mark where it's trading right now. So there are a lot of differentiated stocks within the auto pack which are looking attractive and I believe it's uh, very much possible that these stocks may continue to uh, outperform. Now the other two names which are also very attractive, one of them is actually Hero Motor Corp. Now from 4,900, approximately 5,000 levels, the stock has already seen a 15% correction. My sense is that maybe the stock can come back towards 4,100 mark. That could be a, a you know a zone of extreme oversold as well as a, a point where the you know value may come back again for the stock price at least in terms of demand. So I would believe that that could be a very good territory in case if the stock happens to test the 4,100 mark could be a good level where someone could look to buy. And even uh, Bajaj Auto, I think the stock has done exceptionally well, uh, went up to as much as I think 8,400 plus levels. Yesterday, of course, the stock corrected. But I believe in case if it comes back to a 7,500 to 800 zone, could be a very good buy. So net net, the entire basket looks attractive and there are a lot many stocks to choose from. Uh, unlike many of the other sectors, like, you know, just a differentiated sector, like maybe private sector banking stocks, etc. All right, very bullish on the entire auto space, says Kunal. Meantime, watch out for indecent bank in trade. The management uh, meet took place and now Macquarie has come out with their brokerage note. They maintain an outperformed stance with a target of 900. What are the key takeaways and observations from Macquarie? We've got Gaurav here to take us through that. Morning, Gaurav. Indescent Bank is definitely going to be in focus because Macquarie met with the management of Indescent Bank and according to the management, the system liquidity which we have seen uh, some problems in the system liquidity that are going to stay in the near term but they are believing this is going to ease somewhere when the rate cuts are going to happen and they are expected again in H2 FY25. From here on, they are also expecting the rate cuts will also reduce the gap between loan growth and deposit growth for the banking segment. But if you look at Indescent Bank and the segment wise performance, we have already seen some strong credit demand coming up in the segments such as vehicle financing and microfinance for Indescent Bank. We have already seen the bank gaining share in some of the segments such as LCV financing, uh, car loans, microfinance and credit cards. But management has again reiterated their focus on reducing their uh, exposure from the credit card segment because they want to limit the exposure of the unsecured book overall for the bank. Lastly, if we look at the outlook from the management, they are expecting loan growth, uh, loan book growth to be somewhere 1.5 times higher than the industry growth level. They are expecting slippages to normalize from here on. And lastly, the contingent buffer, which was actually a key concern in 3 qfi 24 results. Now management is expecting, con they are con expecting to increase their contingent buffer to make the the asset quality st more stabilized and more stronger. Lastly, on the back of this, we also saw that Macquarie maintained its outperform rating and a target price of 1900 rupees per share. They have also maintained Indusind Bank as one of their top picks because if you look at the valuation according to Macquarie, there it's trading at 1.6 times price to book value, which is still a little cheaper given that the ROA trajectory has been strong for the bank. So all in all, strong words have come out from management as well as Macquarie on Indusind Bank. So let's see how bank performance in today's trade. For that, Sanjeev, meantime, just wanted to scratch that point that you were talking about with respect to the kind of froth that we're seeing within the broader universe. So is yesterday's move, maybe the SEBI uh, MF norms uh, spooking the market, all of that leading up to more carnage within the broader universe? What is the sense that you're getting? Well, uh, see, Avan, corrections are always uh, un uncalled for, and but they, they clean out the men from the boys. And it was much needed. You know, every day people were making money on mid cash, rightly or wrongly. There is money coming into that. Maybe Sebi sounded a word of caution that, you know, entry is easy, exit sometimes become difficult because of liquidity. But I think it's part and parcel. You have the US uh, inflation data. And uh, maybe 20, 22,000 was a sticky number staying above that. We still think the broader market is where the money is. It's going to be private banks, read my lips, which are going to lead the market higher. And I think you should be in marquee names. Midcaps is something which we've been telling people to take some chips. But now when you get this correction, utilize the right part to get into. Look at the OMCs from... Uh, from 600, HPCL is 500. From 195, IOC is 167. And, and ONGC has not corrected from 280. Still, I think that is a place where you should be watching out for. Because PSUs will give you an opportunity of extreme greed and fear. When there is extreme greed, take some money off the table. 
and extreme fear again gives you an entry opportunity. So IOC, Nalco, ONGC, HPCL for us are buys in this uh, in, in this uh, correction. And we think uh, Avan today being expiry, I think second half could surprise on the upside because it is more of retail liquidation. But I expect the first week of March to see much more traction on, on maybe the large caps coming back. However, I, I continue to feel that the second half of March may be a little tricky. So uh, we will be we will be, we will have to bear with volatility being part of the market uh, for the next fortnight. Let's welcome on board then Sanjeev Bhaseen who's joining in on the show. Hi there, uh, Sanjeev. Good to have you as always. Let's begin by getting your take then on some of these hospital stocks. A um, lot of the private sector players saying that this is going to be catastrophic for the sector. Jeffrey says that the concerns are a bit overdone and it's actually a buying opportunity. Your take? Yeah. Good morning, Awan. Uh, this was a this was something which should have been done years back and you know that uh, on the pretext of insurance uh, private hospitals have been laughing their way to the bank now can it be replaceable it's a million dollar question you've always had cghs which trades at more humanitarian rates and the others make money and you know it's very difficult you cannot be philosophical philosophical and make money that's the underlying business <clears throat> I think there will be some compromise. It, 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 it's been years since you've seen any regulatory change, but it's a sounding bell. If it does deepen, then definitely all these, uh, you know, so-called new age uh, hospitals, which are branching out for them, uh, that would be, uh, you know, an issue to handle with because pricing is what actually is driving margins and uh, any cap on that will see uh, some sort of uh, lethargy on uh, both the treatment side and retaining good staff, which is again going to be a longer term issues. So we'll see what it is. But I think just now it's just a small spoke in the panel. I think uh, wiser wisdom will see that there will be a compromise from both sides. Sanjeev, hi, morning. Wanted to understand what's the prediction for the month of March. Uh, the March seasonality uh, indicates that uh, we'll do quite okay. But considering Feb has been a fabulous month, sure, with its, uh, you know, bout of volatility, what are we in store for March? Good morning, Aisha. So GDP numbers, the, the Nikkei up 10% in a month, not seen in a long time. Uh, all indices looking good. But... Uh, here's the prediction. Beware the Ides of March. Uh, Julius Caesar was warned by the soothsayer and uh, <clears throat> little did he know that around the 15th of March, he, he, there will be something. So there's a, this, this saying goes back. So beware the Ides of March. You could be in for some volatility there. Take some money home, especially in the mid caps. All right, a little bit of caution perhaps for the month ahead. Meantime, a lot of these PSU stocks are off quite significantly from their 52-week high. Now, not something that's entirely uh, unexpected given the ferocious rise up that we saw. But what's the approach right now, Sanjeev, to some of these PSU stocks? So, Avan, uh, we've had an overweight on IRCTC and Concord. They have recently outperformed. And we've now started a buy on IOC, HPBP uh, plus ONGC. We think they are in a very, very sweet spot given that uh, refining margins will be the best. They process both soft and hard crude. And uh, the rupee has started to be more favorable to them. You know, the rupee started to uh, get stronger, which directly or indirectly only benefits the OMCs. So I think and they've corrected also almost 15% from recent highs, 15 to 18%. So I think uh, we've, like we said yesterday also, this is an opportunity. Get into IOC, HP, BP. And ONGC, which I think is uh, connected the minimum and that could bounce back the strongest. As a disclosure, all these four are in our portfolio along with Nalco. And we think that uh, these and IRCTC Concord are a perfect blend of mixture. On PSU banks, we are slightly turning underweight. We are more positive on HDFC, ICICI access. Okay, a plethora of stocks to pick out from. That's a set of ideas coming in from Sanjeev from within the PSU pack and of course private banks as well. Sanjeev, let's get in a sense from you as well as to what the expectation is when it comes to uh, the auto space. Where is it that you are leaning toward? So, Avan, <clears throat> like we said, we had taken some money off the table even though the stocks have gone up slightly more than that. We had m, &M and Tata Motors at much lower levels. We booked that. But we continue to be overweight on Maruti on the four-wheeler. 
Ashok Leland is our dark horse over there. Madarsan Sumi on the OEM. And Bosch continues to be our evergreen play. So we've split the stocks uh, and, and we've uh, participated in the, we are going to participate in the Bajaj Auto buyback. So some sort of volatility can come in there, but the stock has more than doubled. So, so we are trying to you know, mitigate the uh, buyback process and take some uh, chips off the table on the ratio over there. But we continue to think that Ashok Leland can be a huge dark horse from here, given the ascent of Indigo, the bus market, the return of uh, schools and everything which is now infrastructure, which is playing up very, very well on their large segment over there. <clears throat> Rajiv, want to take your call on Bharti as well. Sunil Bharti Mittal was chatting with us yesterday after him becoming the first Indian to be anointed knight by none other than King Charles himself. Uh, he said that he sees Arpu's heading to 300 rupees by the next financial year. What's the call here on the telecom sector? Well, uh, it's evident in the share price, Aisha. Nobody checks their bills and quietly but steadily bills have been going up. I have one connection with Airtel and one with Vodafone. Both every month have some sort of a element which sees a rise. And they are actually in a very, very sweet spot given that data consumption is at its highest. So you've seen Geo all-time high, so is Bharti. Vodafone is at a one-year high. Uh, and, and if they raise capital, then they will be back in the boat. I think, uh, and, and arguably, uh, rightly so, Aisha, you couldn't have had Arpus at 130, 140 for such a long time. The competition played out, it plateaued. Now they are back to pricing powers. I would say that, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, the 300 is an ambitious target, but a 20% upside from the present 200 in the next four or five months seems very much on the card. Um, meantime, uh, Sanjeev, let's get in a take from you as well. Within the entire uh, FMCG basket, what are your preferences? Yeah, so <clears throat> like we said, you know, we are playing on the rural income and yesterday the data showed rural uh, incomes are bouncing back with uh, consumption being a very, very big theme. So Nestle top of the list, Bata and Patanjali. Now Patanjali, uh, you, you've seen some action on it on their Ayurveda and so on, but that's a temporary blip. That is just something of a caution. The type of sales we are seeing and I travel, you know, to tier two, tier three, Patanjali is here to stay. I mean, it is going to get more market share from Lever. And on the rural income, it's the biggest bounce back. I mean, this stock can even double in the next two years. That's what we are betting. But we are betting on the consumption space. Bata and uh, Bata on the seasonality, on the, on the simple reasoning that footwear is a must change. And that jump from campus to Bata is very much on the annual in tier two, tier three cities. It continues to be one of the favored in the urban basket. Uh, Nestle on the back of its predominance in the new launches. And fourthly would be Marico, which we think is very, very well priced for a good, uh, you know, a shift towards that. So all in all, uh, uh, we've turned slightly more uh, positive on this space and we've turned defensive on some of the other mid caps, particularly in the high beta PSU space of banks, railways and defense where we've taken some chips off the table. Okay, that's the take coming in on the market right now. Sanjeev, you made a very interesting point earlier that from PSBs, you're now shifting to private banks and that's where you're finding comfort in the likes of an HDFC bank and ICICI bank. Is it only because they've not moved at all, especially in the case of HDFC bank? No, Aisha, yesterday if you saw, I mean, on, on your channels only, there was talk of RBI reviewing the CDR ratio, the credit deposit ratio, which which has been at a laggard because of the liability franchise. And if there's uh, more relaxation there, because they realize that, <clears throat> that, that that is an across the board symptom, I think HDFC Bank becomes the biggest gainer of that. And thirdly, you've priced in everything. Let me be on record. I think 1350 will not be tested for this year. And if you break 1500 on the upside, then this could be the best play on the guy. Secondly, like I said, second half of March may be volatile. I think HDFC cannot fall and the rest of the market cannot go up. So HDFC, Axis, ICICI, Kotak, RBL Bank is our top pick there. We've turned extremely positive on them. The risk reward is very favorable and you will have earnings to be on the upside. Net interest income, net interest margin and uh, NPAs all fit perfectly in this band. And look, whenever there is too much of crowd on one side, it is always good to be slightly contrarian. You may have time 
to be played out but in the end you will be the winner if you like this video then like share and subscribe to et now